Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us again for our weekly wrap up. My name is Jeremy Cronemeyer. I'm operations manager for Wickham Financial Group. And I also have Graham Wickham here, president and CEO of Wickham Financial and Insurance Services. Graham, what happened in the markets last week? Yeah, thank you, Jeremy. Thanks for our listeners jumping on the call. Uh, yeah, we had a, uh, posted some uh, pretty modest gains, uh, a little volatile week, uh, generally for the U.S. equities. We saw some encouraging employment data that kept hopes alive that the interest rates will be cut in 2024. So we'll have to wait and see with additional economic data as that flows through the system, if that will come true. Uh, so Russell 2000, the NASDAQ, they both rose uh, about 1.5%. Uh, we saw the S&P at about a half a percent. So all in all, we saw about nine of the 11 S&P sectors finish higher. Now, interest rate sen sensitive sectors like utilities led, but on the flip side of that, we saw energy fall about 3.5%, seeing crude oil futures tumbling about 6.5% over some global growth concerns, some fading geopolitical risk out there. So we saw U.S. Treasury yields started to fall on Wednesday after federal chairman or Fed Chairman Powell ruled out the likelihood that they would raise rates. That was starting to be a concern as we started to see some of the economic numbers coming in a bit stronger than expected. But all in all, we saw U.S. data, uh, job growth and wage gains cool more than expected in April. We did see the non-farm payroll increase by about 175,000. Now, that was the slowest pace since October. Now, the unemployment rate did tick up, so that's good, even though I know it sounds bad, but it did tick up to 3.9%. So we saw a job opening slip uh, to its lowest level in three years. Now that was still uh, historically high, but uh, if we look at wage growth, that was 3.9% year over year. That was down for 4.1%. Um, and if we look over an employment cost index, that rose about 1.2%. We kind of wanted to see that going in the other direction. That was the most in one year. We saw unit labor costs climb about 4.7% year over year. We did see productivity slump uh, to about 1.3%. That's a pretty big drop from 3.5%. And the concern would arise there is if product productivity slumps could make wage gains more inflationary and might not prompt the Federal Reserve to be as aggressive with lowering rates. And I think the market's still looking for that. Uh, less, but looking for it. So we did see some more uh, evidence of gradual slowdown emerging with the ISM manufacturing numbers. We saw the service PMI numbers both fell into contractionary territory. So we are seeing a slowing, even though we're getting uh, some numbers that are coming out a little hotter than expected. Overseas, we saw the European uh, GDP return to growth 0.3% uh, in the first quarter. Now, year over year, that's 2.4%. And now they're pricing in about a 70% uh, probability that the ECB will cut rates in June after uh, after that news. We did see Japan's recent meeting signal that it is in no hurry to raise interest rates further at this particular point to support the yen. They felt like inflation is in check. Now, China's April PMI survey showed some pretty unstable uh, demands, some new orders, some employment. Uh, they were slumping in terms of their those figures. Now, looking at this week, uh, Pretty light calendar from an economic standpoint. We do have the FMOC, the Federal Open Market Committee. They're in their quiet, that quiet period is ending. So you're probably gonna see a good number of the committee members coming out, voicing their opinions on the most recent Fed policy through different meetings and whatnot. Uh, we're certainly not in the heart, uh, even though we still have some pretty big uh, earnings to come out, but we're, we're past uh, the most of them at this particular point. Now, let's look at the 10 and 30. That's going to be an option this week on Wednesday, Thursday. So we want to kind of evaluate the, the market's appetite for that. And on Friday, we'll get the May's preliminary consumer confidence report. And that will be released along with some inflation expectations to maybe help guide or give us clues on next steps for the Fed as we approach now or getting towards that June meeting, uh, then the July meeting, getting into different meetings that they may or may not cut rates.
Jim. Gotcha. Well, Graham, I had a question for you since you were yeah. just talking about the Fed. Does the Fed need to cut rates for the investment markets to go higher? No, I don't think they do. I mean, listen, we're still getting some uh, pretty warm. So in, in some situations, some still rather strong economic numbers. So I don't think it does. I, I've always been a big believer. All in all, stock prices are going to follow earnings. As long as earnings are holding up and things seem pretty good and we don't look like the Fed's going to raise rates so inflation is not going through the roof again or heating back up, I don't think it does. It doesn't mean that the market's set up for huge gains at this particular point. Like I've said before, maybe we just digest here as we go through the spring and into the summer, maybe just uh, maybe a cooling off period, but it doesn't mean we need a big correction. It doesn't mean that we need to go up a lot more. Still expecting a pretty strong year in the market, if they start to lower interest rates this year, keep in mind, that's pretty good for bonds. You're getting paid really well in these fixed income areas. And if we start to see rates dropping and we're not looking at uh, a situation of recession, which we're not at this particular point, you know, again, that's pretty good for bonds that have been lagging stocks of late. Gotcha. Well, we always appreciate the information. Yeah. Thank you so much. And to our listeners, we do have a few spots available for our Retirement Planning Today classes coming up this Saturday. So if you're interested in that, um, give us a call here at the office or check out our website and go sign up for that. Um, it's this Saturday, the 11th and next Saturday, the 18th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. So again, we appreciate it and we'll see you next time. Take care.